Hello, my name is AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida. And I want to bring you today is a game that I annotated on the internet quite a while back. However, um, I've not done a video on this game as of yet. And I wanted to correct that this morning also because it's an extremely beautiful game. It's by one of my favorite players of all time. It's by Wilhelm Steinitz. He was the first world champion. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like Steinitz or uh, don't believe that he played uh, beautiful chess. In fact, um, there's a book uh, by an author that I respect greatly, Andrew Soltis, and it's called The 100 Most Beautiful Games of Chess Ever Played. And in that book, um, there, I don't believe there's a single game by Steinitz. Uh, however, I believe very strongly that Steinitz did play great games, and I'm not the only one to recognize that. There's a very good book by Gary Kasparov, and it's called My Great Predecessors. And it's a series of books, and I have all those books. And in the first volume of that, he looks at the first three or four world champions, and he examines the play of Steinitz. And he shows in that book very convincingly that Steinitz played many attractive games of chess, many of them with ideas that demonstrated both sparkling play and also original concepts. Okay, and um, let's just go ahead and look at this game because it's a, it's in a very good game. Um, it's also game number five in the Mammoth Book of the World's Greatest Chess Games. And uh, you can look, uh, it's best to look at the revised of it. Edition. Um, they've, I've, they've got two or three revised editions now. But anyway, the game starts off e4, e5. Of course, you know, you got to remember that the four most important squares in a game of chess are the center, and the thing that you want to do most is control the center. Of course, d4, d5, e5, and e4. So you want to control those four center squares. Let's just highlight those really quickly. And those, that's the area of chess that you really want to remind yourself constantly to control the center. The four basic principles, I believe, of the opening game are control the center, um, develop your pieces, um, protecting the king and castle early, and maintain the, you know, the material balance with an emphasis on square control. Now, a lot of my students, you know, they say they're aware of the fact that they have to control the center in the opening, but many oftentimes you'll see them developing a knight to d7 when maybe the knight would be better left than c6 or they miss a chance for a move like f5 which chips away at white's pawn center i could go on with many many examples but i think you need to constantly remind yourself while you're playing a game of chess that the center is the the most important part of a game of chess and uh anyway moving on with the game the, the second move was knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 of course it's a ray lopez Knight f6. Now in this game, this is game four of the uh, fourth world championship. Uh, this was played in 1892. It was a rematch between Steinitz and Shigorin. Um, uh, he, Steinitz had played Shigorin once before and beat him rather convincingly, but uh, Shigorin was one of the world's best players at that time. And according to uh, Chess Metrics, the uh, website by Jeff Sonis, uh, Shigorin would have been rated, you know, 2,700 plus. He is easily one of the better players of his day. So he is one of the top players of his time. And Steinitz, you know, was easily at that time probably the world's best player. And uh, this game was played in 1894. This is the fourth match, I mean, rather, 1892. And this is the fourth match game of their uh, world championship match in 1892. It's a very famous game. Now, this uh, opening is called the Berlin Defense. To the Ray Lopez. Now, modern theory had pretty much once given up on this whole system. However, in 2000, uh, in his world championship match with Gary Kasparov, Vladimir Kramnik revived this veneral uh, line, and he, even the great Gary Kasparov, was unable to figure out what the best method of dealing with Black's cunning choice of openings. And of course, if you want to review those games, you can find those games just about anywhere online. Continuing on with the game, Black White plays d3. D6, C3, G6, and this is rather sensible. I think in lieu of White's rather slow development, Black can op, uh, opt for a fianchetto of his fianchetto rather of his king bishop. Normally, Black doesn't have time for this type of deployment. Uh, usually, in the main lines that close Lopez, Black places his king bishop on E7, 
and he very oftentimes will reposition it later in the game. Once he's castled, he'll play rook e8 and bishop f8 and g6 and place the bishop on g7. In other words, hit the bishop will be redeployed to the g7 square. However, given white's rather slow opening here, I don't think there's anything wrong with fee and kettling the bishop. In fact, there's one thing about this game that strikes me as an extremely modern uh, handling of this opening. Uh, you know, people like to comment, well, back in those days, they didn't know how to play the openings or, you know, they played the openings rather crudely. But to me, both players are playing a very sophisticated opening and playing the opening, you know, rather uh, in a modern way. Uh, continuing on with the game, white plays knight bd2, bishop g7. Now here, uh, I'll just fire up a chess engine here. I'm going to fire up probably, go ahead and put up Fritz 12 here just temporarily. And uh, we'll just give that a couple of minutes. And, um, you know, I've, uh, Fritz 12 seems to be liking, uh, you know, a lot of different moves, primarily here uh, uh, castles or, you know, simply D4 for white. Both of those moves look to be very solid moves for white. However, um, all things considered, um, you know, Steinus does something totally different here. Um, he plays knight F1. Now, White's going for an immediate transfer of the queen knight. Obviously, he's looking to put the knight on either g3 or e3. And on e3 would be especially important because it would be watching both f d5 and f5. And uh, those are two very key squares there. It appears too slow to be effective, and I don't know that many modern GMs would play this way. However, it's not clearly bad, and no refutation of this line exists in any book that I could find. So uh, let's just leave it at that. Well, you know, it, it might have been overly um, uh, redeploying, but at the same time, if White wants to play this move, going back to the position before knight f1, um, if White wanted to play this move, if he castles, then he has to play rook e1 and then play redeploy the knight. So really what Steinitz may look at it as a way of saving time. And also, too, he's not really sure that he wants to castle kingside. So Black castles kingside. Bishop a4, this is a very good move. Uh, you know, a lot of times black gains time by hitting this bishop. And white usually wants to redeploy this Lopez bishop after the opening's over. It usually goes to b3 or even c2. Oftentimes, you know, in many Lopez games, you can find in many games, there's a very famous game by Geller where he gets the bishop on c2 and eventually even sacks on h7. Um, so anyway, uh, going on with the game, you know, Steinitz is playing eight bishop a4 there. Now here black plays knight d7. That was probably a little slow. Paul Kier's recommends a move that I, I like a lot. He wants to play the move there, ace, 8a6. And that, that move seems to be a, a little bit better there. Again, 8a6 was recommended by Paul Kiers. Um, black plays knight d7. That's a, that was a little slow there. And white plays knight e3, knight c5, bishop c2, knight e6. And now Steinitz comes up with a very original and bold plan. He plays h4. You know, a lot of people say Steinitz played dull chess and he played uninteresting chess. He just shuffled his pieces around. But uh, this game clearly shows that that's not always true. I mean, here Steinitz is basically choosing a bold plan. He's thinking about, you know, putting pressure down the H-file and even opening up the starting a kingside attack. And I think Shigorin reacts a little too mechanically here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he should have done here. I haven't done a deep analysis with all the latest engines. Ribka 4. Fritz 13 and Houdini 2.0. Um, if I had spent, say, you know, 10 or you know, so hours with the, all those chess engines, then I could tell you definitively maybe what Black's best idea here would be. Maybe simply an, or, or an immediate F5 so as to, uh, you know, maybe Black gains space and, you know, tries to open up the game since he's already castled and White's King's in the center. There's all kinds of ideas there. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, Shigorin, he, he simply plays 97 here. And that's not a bad idea. Again, that supports these squares. And also, too, he's maybe looking to exchange off white's knight if the knight comes here, or maybe even if knight d5, just c6, kicking the knight, forcing white to either exchange or withdraw the piece. So, you know, you know but um, um, in this position, I, I believe Fritz likes knight f4, and Houdini, I think, actually likes the immediate f5. But anyway, moving on with the game, black did play 1197 there. And now white plays h5. He's immediately pr pressure on down the h file, as, as we already talked about. d5. And black's breaking in the center. That's actually the correct way to play for black. h takes g6. 
F takes G6. Now, I would have expected Queen E2 or some other move here, but White plays E takes D5. Give that move an X clam. And he's, what he's doing, he's going to bring his sleeping king bishop to light, life, and it's going to come into the game very strongly. Takes, takes, knight takes d5. Queen takes d5, bishop b3. Now, one of the drawbacks with white's plan here is, let's say white, black played queen d6 and then rook d1, this pawn here is going to be weak. But for whatever reason, um, Steinitz didn't play that way. I mean, rather, Shagordan didn't play that way. He played queen c6. And white goes queen e2, of course, attacking the pawn on e5, bishop d7, and now white plays bishop e3. Um, rather than play d4 or snatch a pawn there, Stein has preferred simply to, you know, to uh, develop pieces there, and I think that's got to be best. Um, after knight takes e5, uh, backing up here, if white had played knight takes e5, John M says queen takes g2, and black gets a ton of counterplay, so that may is probably not the best idea there for white. Moving on with the game, black plays... King h8 there, he's getting out of this pin on this file here. And now white castles queenside. Very bold, very sharp, uh, very interesting, and uh, probably the correct move there, too. I think if you analyze that with Houdini 2.0, I'm pretty sure that's the, the move that Houdini likes. I didn't do a deep analysis there, but it seems to be the move that Houdini picks. And what's really interesting is, as I've not seen very many games at all where in the Ray Lopez where white got to castle on the queen side. I played quite a number of king pawn openings myself, and a few few Ray Lopez's, but I'm almost always castling on the king side in those games. So to see white castling queen side is very unusual and very sharp and very interesting. Black plays R A E eight. Of course, he's just deploying his bishop here, and now white's next move is just simply brilliant. Um, you know, you can just take a minute. In fact, I'm going to pause the video for just a second. And I'd like you to just take a minute or two, or take as much, I'm only going to pause the video for a few seconds, but you take as much time as you like and see if you can predict White's next move here. Okay, we're back now. And were you able to guess the move that White played here? White played a very sophisticated move here. He went queen f1. I give that move a double x slam. That's an extremely interesting move. Um, White's preparing just to power right down the uh, h file. And apparently... Shigorin completely missed the point of that move completely. So anyway, black plays a5. Now, this is technically correct. When you've castled on opposite sides of the board, the general idea is you're supposed to attack on the, you know, white attacks on the king side and black would attack, you know, on the queen side. That would be the, the correct way to play the opening. But I think here now white's just too fast and, and too quick. Now white decides to open up the game completely. d4. Very good move. X clam. Very sharp not concerning himself at all with what's wise to play. And also, too, there's a nice threat, too. Their threat is d4, d5, forking these two pieces. Again, maybe showing that queen c6 may have not been 100% the correct idea there. e takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Now, of course, black's paring down there. And, of course, knight takes d4, runs into a haymaker. Check, king h7, queen h1, one check. And here, black's got to just play giveaway. Uh, I think it's maybe just one or, one or two moves, stick both his bishops on the h-file, and white takes them, and it's checkmate. So that's very bad. So after knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, was completely forced. And now white plays rook takes d4. And black plays a very bad move. He plays knight takes d4. You could give that move a question mark, but I also think that really nothing, computer analysis will show that possibly nothing at this point was going to save black anyway. But uh, anyway, some possible defenses was king g8, queen d1, rook f7, rook g4, and white's clearly better. According to Fritz, you know, 11, that, that's the best line when I first analyzed this game. It's been many years ago since I first took a serious look at this game. And, uh, you know, Max Uwe recommended possibly b5 there. But then white plays queen d3, and he's much, much better. And there's lots of different defenses there. But certainly, going back here at this point, when black played knight takes d4 here you know that that just invites the smash and now of course you've already seen the move i've already kind of given the let the cat out of the bag but the next move of white is very brilliant he plays the smash on h7 check another double x clan move another brilliant move just a positively amazing move king takes h7 queen h1 king g7 and now you might expect bishop takes d4 check that's what all my students want to play at this point Again, going back to this position after 25 king g7, um, 
you know, you expect white to play bishop takes d4 check. That's what several of my students suggested at this point, just about when I always study chess with my students. I've shown this game dozens of times to my students over the years, and it's a wonderful game of sharp attacking play. But uh, just about all my students here suggest bishop takes d4 check. But the correct move here for white is he plays bishop h6 check. Very wonderful move. This forces the black king out into the open. Of course, if king h8 or king h7, simply bishop takes rook check. I believe that's going to be mate after bishop h3, queen takes h3 mate. So going back to h7 or h8 simply is not an option. This, force, this wonderful move, bishop h6 check, put, checking here with the bishop, forces the black king out in the open. Uh, king uh, f6, queen h4 check. King e5, queen takes d4 check. And here black resigned because if king f5, I believe g4 will be mate. But just a wonderful game by Stein. It's an absolutely amazing game. Shows brilliant concepts, original play, uh, sharp attacking chess, wonderful ideas. I mean, I just, I just could, I could sit here and bubble over about this game for five or ten minutes, but that would kind of be beating a dead horse. But I think you get the idea that I really think this is just a fantastic game. In fact, and probably of all the games played prior to 19, 1900, if I made a list, and I like doing those kind of things, if you've seen my websites, you know I like doing those kind of lists. I would have to, if I made a list, say, of the top 10 games, the most beautiful, original, good analysis, I've analyzed these games, and they show correct play of some of the prettiest and most interesting and well played games prior to 1900, this might be the number one game, in my opinion, you know, pr pr played prior to 1900 certainly is just a wonderful, wonderful game of chess. Well, anyway, that's pretty much concludes my video on this game, uh, Steinitz Shigorin, uh, the fourth match game of their World Championship match in 1892. I hope you enjoyed my video, and I hope you will, um, um, you know, check out all my videos on YouTube and also my websites, and I'll post a link under this video in the section where it shows says show more. I'll post my link to my webpage. Um, on this game once this video is posted on YouTube. Thank you for watching my video and have a great day.